Dave Howell, and I'm the founder of Avatron Software. Avatron is dedicated to producing high quality applications for mobile platforms that make people truly productive. Of our apps, Error Display, I think, is the one that exhibits everything that we've learned so far about making apps for a mobile platform. Error Display is simple, it's easy to describe in a sentence. It, um, it's, it's small enough in scope that it lets us worry uh, inordinately about every little detail and every little edge case. Um, and that allows us to make an app that's easy to use, it's easy to learn to use, and it's also um, uh, something you can work at fluently once you've mastered it. Air Display is, is the app that lets you take your iPad or other device and put it next to your personal computer and extend your desktop onto the iPad. So you can drag Windows onto the iPad and you can click on them. You can even use, use the touch screen and click buttons on, with your finger. Or you can turn the, the iPad into the other orientation and that turns your second monitor for your computer. And what we're doing there is blurring the distinction between mobile devices and personal computers. And you know, Apple's got their own uh, their own philosophy and their own strategy about how they want to evolve the state of the personal computer and of mobile devices. And we think they're probably going to be right by by might or by correctness that that they're going to make their vision reality. Meanwhile, there's a lot of space for us to see it differently and and to blur the distinctions that they create. So I, in a way, I mean, I envy startups that are in a big open space. It's like a warehouse. It's very industrial. Um, and there's concrete and steel and bricks. And um, there's a lot of buzz going around. There's a high noise level. And there are tables and people collaborating all the time, people interacting by the minute. But what they're missing that we really thought we needed was a, a place where you could concentrate intently on what you're doing for hours at a stretch. And I think that our apps are complicated enough that we need maybe more intense concentration for prolonged periods than, than a lot of startups do. Um, and we're pretty good at breaking up the tasks in the engineering so that each one can work on something for a month straight without having to course correct every few minutes. And so we've found places to work so far where everybody gets a private office or as nearly as near to that ideal as possible. Um, and I think it works really well. I think we miss a little bit from the uh, the camaraderie and the social experience of the traditional startup flavor, but this is really great too. Um, right now we're subletting from a financial services firm and our offices look like something that a financial advisor or a lawyer would be in. Our next space is an old, uh, a similar space where we've got a lot of private offices near the river and um, a, lot of, a lot of support for, for uh, individual concentration. Someday I'd like to be in a place that's some kind of a hybrid where we all work in, a, in an open space but we have a bunch of um, private offices that we can all retreat to as necessary. That's, uh, that's for someday. Um, as a company, we have been trying to bootstrap financially, so we didn't have any uh, funding except for self funding and our own sales. And we've had a fairly thin um, operating margin. We really needed to make no mistakes and execute everything as well as possible. Uh, so any, any projects that we've started that weren't promising, we needed to figure that out as soon as possible, abort mission, reconfigure, um, set our sights on something else, and keep going. When we worked on our first product, the Apple Store, the Apple App Store was new, and um, there weren't very many apps out yet. We didn't get our app out at day one, but within a month we put our first app, Air Sharing, out. And of course, when we started working on it, there was no competition, there, there were no apps. By the time we were just about done, there were two other apps that did just what our app did in slightly different ways, but close enough that we were going to compete head to head. And they were already known, at least, at least to us, so we assumed they were, they were known to everybody else. And our challenge was to be noticed. And we thought we had a better app, but why would anybody notice that in the noise of the App Store, which at the time had over 800 apps in it? Um, which doesn't sound like much compared to the 350,000 plus that are there now, but then it was still daunting. 800 competitors you know, um, competing for attention. 
And so what we did was for the first two weeks, we made air sharing free. And we were hoping some tens of thousands of users might download the app. Um, and in the first day, if I remember correctly, about 168,000 people downloaded it. And over the course of two weeks, a million people downloaded air sharing. So we had created a, a tremendous buzz around the app at that point. And we didn't have any marketing budget. We didn't do any PR. But we told our friends. And as a result, uh, you know, bloggers and journalists wrote about air sharing, and they recommended it. And, and it turns out, this wasn't something that we did on purpose, but other people could. Um, just through, through happenstance, we happened to make an app that really appealed to us. And as a bunch of nerds, it also appealed to very influential um, technical writers. And that's something that we've tried to learn from and, and do all the time now. We try to appeal to the most influential people. Not necessarily to every user, but to the people who will recommend our products to everyday users. We spent some time in the past doing partner apps, as well as doing our own apps. So we did products that were things that we truly believed in and we could see as being really useful. And that's been a tremendous success. But We've also done partner apps where somebody else will contribute uh, something of value, let's say um, PDF files with reference material in some cases, in other cases clips of video, and in others um, audio content. And we've turned those things into apps. And in some of those cases, because we weren't the owners of the content, because we didn't necessarily believe in where it was coming from, not that we thought that they were bad ideas, they just didn't move us personally. They weren't in our field, you know, we're not emergency workers, so our reference app about how to respond as a first responder to uh, medical emergencies didn't resonate with us. And I think that was a big mistake. We needed to concentrate on, on products we would use, products that we really cared about, and ones where if we did 90% we would feel horrible about it and need to fix it. You know, there, there are a lot of resources that iPhone developers have naturally. There are the things that come from Apple, there's a lot of developer forums, there are um, um, conferences like the Worldwide Developer Conference in San Francisco. But I think locally what's really important for us is the get-togethers of people who are in the same boat as us. There's Mobile Portland, which is a fantastic uh, gathering of other developers and mobile apps. There's uh, the CEO roundtable, something that I've attended and gotten a lot of, of feedback from other people starting companies, making mistakes, doing things right, and talking about the difference. And it's helped me to both share successes and failures and also to learn from other people's mistakes and, and successes. Um, you know, things are going really well right now. Um, if we, we always fret about things that could go wrong and, and you know, a, a competitor will come out of nowhere with a product that seems to be in our space and we'll worry that they're going to um, price it at, at a dollar and, and you know, have a team of 30 Ukrainian programmers putting in more hours than we can, can dream of and, and crushing us with their, their superior force. But so far that hasn't really been a problem. Probably a smarter thing for us to worry about is the unpredictability of what Apple's going to do next. Um, at any point, they can take one of you know a few million of their sixty-five billion dollars in cash reserves and and blow them on on competing with our products or or making us irrelevant somehow. And of course, that keeps us up at night. But it's something we've been worried about for the past three years, and it hasn't hasn't happened at all. The other thing is that the big, well-funded companies are not very nimble. You know, they come in with superior firepower, and and they're they're, they're strong and they do a fantastic job of what they do, but they're not about to change course quickly, which we can do. You know, if, they, if, if we see that they're coming out with a product, whether it's Apple or Google or somebody, coming out with a product that will um, directly compete with ours, we can easily find out what are the differences, what, what are the ways that we can differentiate our products from them, what does the remaining market landscape look like, and adapt. Um, and that's, it's sort of fun, really, to, to have that kind of nimbleness. For us,
us and for me personally, it's all about the products. The rest of it, the, um, the financials, the, the office space, the equipment, or, or whatever it is, it, that's all secondary. It's, it's all a means toward the end of making great products that, that delight customers and that delight us, things that we're proud to work on. And toward that end, for us, it's the little details. It's the things you didn't really have to do. It would have been good enough without this little bit of polish. But but we know that it, that somebody will notice that extra little little polish you put on a corner edge case and say, "Well, I didn't expect them to do that, but they did." Um, some sometimes that will be a, a small subtle transition between one screen and another in an application. In other cases, it'll be uh, something with language or um, just a way of presenting and, and formatting things on the screen, making sure every edge lines up pixel perfectly with every other. Um, all of those little details matter a lot to us. Another thing is sort of the overall workflows. If, if one user of ours has to go through another, an extra step to solve a problem, then spread over the course of a, a million users, we've caused mankind you know, some days of productivity, and we don't want that on our shoulders. For me and, and for Avatron, the, the biggest inspirations come from people who have the same kind of aesthetics that we do and same work ethic. Um, Apple's a great inspiration to us. You know, there, from Steve Jobs through Ives through everybody else at the company, is infused this deep respect for the user's time and annoyance level. Um, they really go the extra mile to create fantastic products. And they're always an inspiration in, in their products and their, uh, and, and their engineering elegance are an inspiration to us.